I'm not in the major of this class, Environment and Humanities. And, uh, I mean, I'm an engineering major and I wanted to graduate with honors, so this was the perfect opportunity for that. And because of this class, I was like, well, I get to go to Montana for sure. Um, the curriculum, we'll see. Um, but I actually, it was, it was really cool because it took writing, um, which is something that's always been a, a job, a chore. Um, and it kind of changed my perspective on it a little bit. Maybe a, a, a paradigm shift to something that's more of a, an art. And so, yeah, now writing is, seems like somewhat of an art to me. And when I look at it like that, it's something that can actually be enjoyed. This is uh, Kirk Caswell here with uh, Environment and Humanities 4350, Landscape and Literature. We're on the Missouri River, between Colbanks Landing and James Kipp State Park. This is the route Lewis and Clark took in 1805. And over here are the famed White Cliffs and the Corps Discovery Camp just over here on the river left. Out here is the class, 10 students studying natural history of this canyon, studying writing, and also leadership. This is the capstone experience, and uh, many of these students are graduating with a undergraduate degree in environment and humanities from Texas Tech University Honors College. We're going to stop over here on River Left and uh, read a little bit of Lewis, Meriwether Lewis's comments, his, his impressions when he saw these white cliffs here in this gorgeous canyon in central Montana. We're gonna left, we're gonna pull off. Don't go by. All right. All right, so here's the entry for May 31st, Friday, 1805. And Lewis and Clark are here. It's um, two or three, three or four long paragraphs. This morning we proceeded at an early hour with the two pierogs, which are these long. What has leadership and landscape provided for me? Well, first, this class has provided me the opportunity to gain life experience that I wouldn't have been able to gain from reading a book. I've worked with a group of people to help set up shelters so we can survive through the night. And I've also learned the power of learning from your failures. On a more personal note, this class has helped me understand a little more about myself and why I am the way I am. I've learned what I was missing from my life before and also what I've kind of been running for, running from in my life. This trip showed me how strong I really am. There were times when the weather wasn't you know, the way we thought it would be, and I was able to really see how much I can handle out there um, when the comforts of home are no longer available. It also gave me great leadership skills that I can take and use as I graduate in the real world, um, and just practi practical application. Number 33. Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. If you realize that you have enough, you are truly rich. If you stay in the center and embrace death with your whole heart, you will endure forever moment right now. I mean, looking at this water, it's all flat, calm for us, and the sun going down over here, and it's uh, 8.30, and it's still light. Um, this has been a long, it takes a lot of work 
in advance to get here, right? So that we, I mean, the, the days we meet in class, the planning, the packing, everything that happens. Of course, and then once things we get went there, wrong, things weren't exactly yeah. perfect, but you sit down in a circle and everyone's like, all right, here's what you did well, here's what you didn't do well, and here's how you can improve your leadership. And so you sit down and you listen to all these things and like, you get legitimate, um, not puffed up, not uh, not made lightly, just perfect for the situation because it's directly to you, um, feedback on how you can improve on your leadership. And so for me, that was so helpful because I can hear like these like several ways, like you could have done this and this and this and this, and you did this and this well. And so I know what to you know, continue doing and what to work on improving. And so I think that and plus you get to see uh, several other people and learn what's good and learn what you what leadership styles you like to follow, what styles are easy to follow, um, how to self lead. Um, so the leadership aspect of it I think was the biggest part, the biggest um, element of what made this class for me. But I'm sure everybody else had different ways, but for me, I think that was the most important, the crucial um, icing on the cake. Out here, as you have these opportunities to lead, um, and even take this beyond our experience after this week, um, in any type of leadership position, if you have things that come up unexpectedly, these concerns or whatever, if we allow those to really impact us, and we choose to be reactive rather than taking ownership and recognizing, hey, sometimes things just are, but the thing I can control is how I respond. You might have people that you associate with that, true, you, you really can't control how a person is going to act or behave, but you can control yourself and how you respond to them. And if they have behaviors that don't necessarily mesh with yours, or maybe they're abrasive, or... Um. This trip also let me be okay with myself. It let me be okay with being dirty and how I looked, even though I hadn't showered for 10 days. All in all, the best thing I learned from this trip was confidence. It gave me a huge confidence booster and now looking back on it I'm going to be able to push ahead and use what I learned in this trip in everyday life. Thomas Jefferson um, sought out Lewis to lead this expedition and he wrote a letter to him and in the letter he says the object of your mission is to explore the Missouri River and such principal streams of it as, by its course and communication with the waters of the Pacific Ocean, whether the Columbia, Oregon, Colorado. And I feel that, you know, these leadership skills are more than just leadership skills. They're skills that can apply to everyday life. And I find that extremely valuable because, you know, I can look and see every single day I have control of my attitude. And that's a huge, huge thing that we can control on our own. No matter what happens, good or bad, we can control our attitudes and endure and push through. And I've really enjoyed the leadership shown by Kurt Howell and Kurt Caswell, and they were a great example of what leadership means and the way that they are patient with us and the way that they instructed us and taught us um, and the way that they really desired for us to grow in our learning and understanding of Master doesn't try to be powerful, thus he is truly powerful. The ordinary man keeps reaching for power, thus he never has enough. The master does nothing, yet he leaves nothing undone. The ordinary man is always doing things, yet many more are left to be done.
warranty break. <laughs> Kurt Howe has just driven the van through a muddy road. He said, don't be dinky. I tried not to be dinky, but I turned the wheel over to him. And um, I'm a lesser man for it. <laughs> Thank you.